I just got off a phone call to the largest solar company in Australia. They say they're installing more batteries than solar panels. This is the largest, most well-known solar company in Australia. They're installing more batteries than solar panels. What does this mean for Australia? It means that within a few years' time, these home batteries, just people's home batteries, will provide more energy, in fact, five times more energy than the world's biggest battery. In other words, Australia's grid will be transformed by you guys installing home batteries. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. I'll get straight to it. Anchor, that's the battery that I have. I've got a 25 kilowatt hour home battery, which I think is a pretty good size. Now, interestingly, the average size of new battery systems being installed in Australia right now is 15 kilowatt hours. That's actually bigger than what people expected it to be, but it's a bit smaller, a bit smaller than what I expected because of the fact that um, if you get a bigger battery under the existing system here in Australia where there's $2.3 billion of battery incentives, the bigger battery, the cost doesn't really increase very much to go bigger. So that's what I recommend to people. If you can get the bigger battery, I think that's the better option. RenewEconomy.com.au says that household battery rebates have smashed forecasts and people are getting a lot more batteries than the government expected to. They're likely to deliver twice the energy of the Snowy Hydro project, which has cost many, many, many billions of dollars. Latest official estimates say that the cost for Snowy Hydro will be $12 billion, up from additional projections of $2 billion. So we're going to get twice that amount of power from a cost of only $2.3 billion. You can see why the government, when these funds run out, when the 2.3 billion eventually runs out, they're more than likely to start it up again because it just makes complete economic sense to have homeowners fix the grid themselves, to get rid of coal themselves. It's still early days since the government uh, rebate scheme has come in, but it's causing good, good things and bad things to happen. I'll explain what the bad things are in just a minute, but mostly it's good. Apparently, there's been 1,000 registrations for new household batteries every single day, so 7,000 per week. In fact, I've heard the numbers might be a bit more than that, with an average size of 18 kilowatt hours. So I was wrong on the 15, it's actually 18 kilowatt hours. What this means is that Australia is on track to have 1 million home battery installations, new ones, in the next few years. Before 2030, they'll easily hit 1 million. There's 4 million households with solar panels, and I actually think that we'll hit more than 1 million, but let's just be conservative. Put it at 1 million at an average size of 18 kilowatt hours, the size it's likely to grow considering the cost of these systems is really low. Anyhow, that means we'll have a total of 18 gigawatt hours of battery storage. To give you some context, the biggest battery in the world right now that's currently in installation, it's a three gigawatt hour battery. It's the Moss Landing battery. And that's the biggest single site lithium ion battery project in the world. Uh, three gigawatt hours is big, but this will be 18 gigawatt hours, meaning it's gonna be six times bigger than the biggest battery on the planet. And as you can imagine, the biggest battery on the planet, it costs a lot more, um, would cost a lot more than 2.3 billion if you wanted to build six of them. Now, the great thing is batteries are, they're challenging to connect to the grid, which is a challenge, but small batteries are not because homeowners are installing these small batteries. They're already connected to the grid. It, and it means that there's no one huge amount of battery power coming onto the grid in one location. It's like all these micro grids uh, being connected to each other and basically supplying small amounts of energy back to the grid or just to the user's homes. And meaning that this is not putting a huge burden on small parts of the, on certain sections of the grid causing problems. So it's actually a perfect solution. To give you some context though, the biggest battery in the world within the next one or two years will actually be the BYD battery being installed in Saudi Arabia. And that's gonna be 12 gigawatt hours, 12 gigawatt hours, which means it's four times bigger than the biggest battery at Moss Landing in California. If the current rate of registrations continues, which I think it's likely to do so, and it could even increase, then this will mean there'll be around 250,000 battery systems installed within a year, within 12 months, 250,000. It would therefore take only four years at the current rate to hit 
1 million installations. Back in November 2021, renewaconomy.com.au says that green energy markets managing director Riz Brazil and Tristan Edis proposed that the small scale renewable energy systems SRES should be modified to provide an incentive for batteries to be installed in conjunction with a solar system. At that time, based on policy design that they put forward, they estimated that within the first three years of operation, it might induce half a million battery systems equal to 6,250 megawatt hours in storage capable of 2,500 megawatts of instantaneous power output. In later economic modeling, work that they prepared for the Australian energy market operator in 2024, they examined the potential impact of introducing a government incentive for batteries equal to between 25% to 33% of the fully installed price of a battery system. This is not too far off what the government actually ended up doing. And the government actually did it quicker than what was predicted. And the reason is because they need solutions immediately. They don't want to wait and have these old coal power plants, which are losing money, continue to lose money. Under the most optimistic scenario of green energy exports, Renew Economy predicted, projected that in the first year of the rebate, battery installations would be just under 80,000 systems and would grow to 200,000 systems installed in 2028 and 2029. The aggregate amount of energy storage capacity that was projected to be installed over 2025, 26 to 29, 30 was around 8,300 megawatt hours, with about 3,300 megawatts of inverter capacity in the residential and small commercial sector. I mean, this doesn't include vehicle to grid though. This doesn't include anyone plugging their electric cars into the grid. What appears to be unfolding is far greater than anything that Renew Economy say that they contemplated. Based on the last few days of STC registration data that was collected for green energy markets, Solar Reports subscribers, around 1,000 battery systems were registered per working day and the average capacity per system was 18 kilowatt hours. Will this rate continue? I actually think it's going to increase because one of the problems being faced is some installers are saying they can't do the job. So this is the problem. Installers have recommended batteries to people, and I've done this as well. They've said, this is probably the best battery. I would, this is what I would get, right? This happened before the whole thing started to skyrocket. All of a sudden, they're getting thousands of orders. Then they contact the companies, uh, one of them in particular, SIG Energy, and SIG Energy says, sorry, we've run out of batteries. Can't get any more for months. So it's a big problem now. All these consumers, and I believe it's more than a 1,000 a day, are ordering new batteries and the companies have run out. They can't be supplied. Now, there are alternatives. My battery is an anchor battery. I don't believe they've run out. They're one of the biggest um, home battery suppliers in the world. So, I mean, that's an option for you. You could use, I think they're good. The reason I use this is because of the water and dust proof rating. Basically, if you live within 10 kilometers of a beach, then everything rusts. Everything gets water inside. It happens much faster. And the anchor battery does have the best rating of any battery that I found on the market for water ingress over the course of 10 years. There's a guarantee for that reason. And that's the reason I got that one. Now, I'm not selling it to you because I don't make any money from it whatsoever, just letting you know my experience. What this means is, if we manage to continue uh, listing 1,000 systems per working day as being um, fulfilled at 18 kilowatt hours per system until the end of the current financial year, uh, with two weeks off for a Christmas, says Renew Economy, that would put us at 240,000 battery systems, right? Now, those numbers might be more than that, they might be less, but it'd be approximately 240,000. Given some systems are registered over weekends, you could increase this to 250,000 systems. Multiply that by 18 kilowatt hours, and you've got 4,500 megawatt hours of storage. They go on and say this, if we use a rule of thumb ratio of 2.5 kilowatt hours of storage to one kilowatt of inverter capacity, we could expect 1,800 megawatts to be installed by the end of June, 2026. Let's then assume we keep going at 250,000 systems per annum until the end of the 2029-30 financial year. I'm gonna assume that battery sizes will get bigger after over time as batteries continue to come down in price. Then we'll have 22,500 megawatt hours, assuming batteries don't get bigger, it's still massive, and 9,000 megawatts of small-scale battery storage in place. To put that in perspective, Australia has around 8,000 megawatts of hydro, 
coming from Snowy Hydro predominantly, and a bit under 15,000 megawatts of gas power station capacity. In overall energy terms, if this battery capacity was cycled fully each day, it would deliver twice the energy of the Snowy Hydro system on average all across the year. So this is revolutionary. Battery storage in Australia will skyrocket because we're not counting a few things here. As I mentioned before, battery sizes will continue to get bigger. The actual energy density of the batteries over time will get larger. The cost of the batteries over time will decline. I mean, basically Moore's law will jump into effect here where you double production capacity, the cost will come down. And not enormously, but it will come down. And then you consider the fact that people are going to be saying, ah, what are you doing? So you're going to get the battery system installed. You've already got a solar system on your house. Your neighbor's going to be like, oh, what did you do that for? And you're going to say, well, actually, the government paid for a lot of this. It's very affordable. And now I'm paying nothing. I'm, compl- I'm off the grid. I don't need to use the grid. Uh, or I choose to if I want to. But the truth is, I don't actually need to use the grid. Or you combine that with your EV battery. You start plugging your EV into the grid. There's so much that's going to happen here. This this is going to explode. The amount of money in this sector is going to be enormous. I'm just telling people, a lot of people, if you're looking for an industry in the renewable energy sector, in the EV sector to get involved in, I think this is the one that's going to go absolutely ballistic. A lot of investment um, panels and advisories, uh, they are also saying the same thing. They're saying energy storage will grow faster than any other sector of the global economy over the next 10 years. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.